Hey everybody, let's review spaceships. I'm trying to come up with a shape language and a theme for my own game. Mine is really hard because they're all modular and it's hard to make modular things look good. But I think if we take a look at Sketchfab here and just take a look at the various spaceships, we can at least learn a little something here and there. So we're going to be talking about these ships until I get tired of talking about them. And hopefully you will find that you have very different opinions from me. And that's great because it means that we just have different aesthetic um, op, you know, different different aesthetic approaches, and that's what makes the world go round. Let's start at the top, because I already talked about this on Twitter. This space fighter here, uh, it has a pretty good shape in terms of it having a front wedge and then a rear engine nacelle that overlaps and interlocks but isn't actually part of the front wedge. And it's got these heavy wing braces, which normally I would be like, why are there wings on this? But in this case, it serves to tie the rear engine nacelle into the front of the ship, the engine pod into the front of the ship. The colors are also great. I love how it starts hot, goes to cold, and has this yellow anchor in the middle. Wonderfully done, but that's the only stuff I like about this ship. It's a hard to read ship because it's so over greebled and over detailed. This is the sort of ship you get when you're just building a ship to be um, to be a thing, rather than to have rather than having a strong aesthetic goal in mind. You're just I'm going to build a space fighter, and this is how I'm going to do it. I don't really have an overall aesthetic purpose. You're not trying to leave a specific impression. You're not trying to say a specific thing. It doesn't exist in a specific world. So it's hard to really take anything away from this. It's an undifferentiated blob of greeblies. Uh, so that's not necessarily bad, but in this case, it's not what I would want for my ships. It's just too... Um, gray. And it, I don't mean gray in terms of color. I mean, it's just the whole thing is undifferentiated. Over here, we can see uh, a ship with a similar issue, but sort of uh, in, in the opposite direction. This ship is obviously deeply inspired by a specific um, uh, IP. I, I don't know which one. Uh, it looks like a Mass Effect ship to me, but there's been a whole bunch of recent ships like Starship Citizen and stuff. To be honest, it looks more like a Starship Citizen ship than a Mass Effect ship. But either way, they're obviously taking a lot of inspiration from other ships, and that's not bad. But the problem is that when you do that, you tend to think, I want to make this ship, but more. Like, uh, I want to make the Normandy, but more. And when you do that, a lot of times you will literally just make it more. For example, you'll add on this thing on the back here, this here. And that actually weakens the design of the ship. Or you'll add in this tertiary blade here, which folds in between the other two layers, and that weakens the design of the ship because it's too much. You're not leaving the impression, you're just adding more junk. And overall, you can see that this ship has a very, very broad, flat, squashed shape. You could go with that. You could try to aim for an impression that gives this broad, flat shape that it's due, but instead what we've got is a ship that doesn't have the impression of being broad and flat until you look at it from a specific angle and realize someone stepped on the Normandy. So uh, I don't really think this is a bad ship. I'm sounding overly harsh because I'm specifically aiming for shape language and for aesthetics, and this is a little bit too crowded for both. Uh, the actual ship would be fine. You could put it in Mass Effect and it would look great. It would just work. But in terms of leaving an impression, it's cluttered and it's kind of irregular. It doesn't give off a specific feeling, and that's a shame. Uh, if we wanted to talk about spaceships that give off a specific feeling, this next row is full of them. Uh, here's one by Elizabeth Edwards, who I follow on Twitter, and it's a VR sketch, as you can see. And the ship itself is absolutely nothing special when it comes to spaceship design. It's a, just a classic fighter shape. But because of the coloration of the ship and the coloration of the background elements and even the character on top, we get a strong impression. It leaves a very strong aesthetic imprint on our eyes when we look at it. So even though each of the elements is quite dull and uninteresting, when you put them together they become much more powerful. They become very interesting. And that's something to keep in mind. You don't have to have a really amazing shape language if you have a really amazing grasp on what you want people to see. 
Now if we continue to look around, here's one. This is obviously a hot roddy sort of thing by Dom Klub. And what they've done is they've taken the traditional rocket shape, the traditional cigar rocket. They've crushed it down to be chibi. Uh, and then they have completely retrofitted it with all sorts of fun hot rod details, like the exhausts here and the bumper and the flame element and the, the rivets and even these wheel wells. These are really well done, and they really evoke the sort of feeling that you're aiming for, even though the ship itself is is obviously just a cartoon. It's not realistic. And this is something that's worth respecting, even though it's not something I can do with my game, because I can't really have modules that end up being this distorted. Still, so you can see, you don't have to have it be on a, a, a river of grass or whatever in order to make it have an impression. It just has to be something with an aesthetic goal. I'm not going to say that ship is the best ship around, but it has an aesthetic goal. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take a look at some other ships here. I've got lots of random stuff. Let's take, just go down the list here. This is by Carlito69. And it's the Albatar. And I haven't looked at it before. It's super crowded. Look at how crowded this ship is. So once again, I love the shapes of this ship. Um... I just don't like how the, the the impression it leaves. This ship would actually be better if it was untextured. That's really funny. Basically, uh, the way that they've got hull elements carefully arranged around the center hull in interlocking segments is really nice. It gives a very, very strong aesthetic impression. It's the sort of thing you could see being a foundation for an entire universe. You could You could have a universe built around this idea of tubes and interlocking plates. That could be your shape language, and it would look fantastic. Uh, it's great, but this person put in way, way, way too much thoughtless greebling and doesn't have a nice flow. Uh, it has a very nice feel if you just think about the, um, the overall shape, though. The kind of crab-like shape it's got is wonderful. It could be played up, and the ship could be made really nice if it was just a little bit more careful with the with the aesthetic goal it had in mind. Uh, I think that maybe modeling it after, you know, giving the aesthetic impression of a crab could have really made this interesting. Um, other ideas, you could definitely try and play up the sweep of the ship so that you have like a paint scheme coming around the outside and then down the middle, forming like a, a, a U with a, with a beam in the middle if you can see what I mean, a paint and then paint, just because that would give the eye something to read. It would read the flow of the ship because the paint is telling it how to read the ship. Also, just radically reducing the amount of greeblies uh, and plating would go a long way. Skip over the ones that aren't spaceships, and here's Skip's Leg Day, the spaceship from MJ the Hunter. This is another one of these ships that has a very, very strong aesthetic goal in mind, and that has an interior. I love it when ships have an interior like this, even if it's obviously just, you know, thrown together. Um, the overall impression this ship gives is very good. It's quite similar to some of the designs I've aimed for in the past. I love the segmented hull here, where it's obviously just a couple pieces of hull taped together. Uh, and they've got a whole bunch of engines and some insectoid pods. This sort of insectoid, beetly shaped ship is, is, is going through a resurgence. We used to see it all the time back in the 80s and early 90s in anime. But then it kind of faded out um, as people started to get more interested in uh, sharper um, ships that weren't so beetle inspired. But they're coming back because a couple of people my age and a little bit older um, are starting to design spaceships and... They love these beetly shapes. Uh, one really good advantage of the beetly shape is that it reads really well because we're used to seeing beetles. We know how to read the beetles. So basically, it's just a matter of having a carapace and a bunch of crap stapled to it, and it'll read fine. Um, and we can actually see another example of that up here, which I skipped over because it's by the same author uh, as the one to the left. But you can see how it's got the same beetly sort of feel to it. Uh, and I think that that's great. I don't plan to have beetly feel because it's really hard to do with a modular setup. Uh, the modules don't end up working out because a beetle is very much a thorax 
and then a head and some plating. And it's hard to do that when you are just um, throwing together similarly sized modules, you know? Here's the Spaceship Race Ship by James Robbins. So this is obviously something that um, uh, has a very strong impression, and I like that. It's got, it's not really space, it's, uh, it's definitely ground, but it's, it has this very, very strong uh, aesthetic goal, and that is blue. Um, so even though it's a very basic shape, just a central nose element with some intakes and engines stapled to the side, and then some wings, uh, it, it could not really get any more basic. But the way that he's painted the blue here is really striking, and it's really well done. And I really am enjoying the kind of mustachioed front fender area and this underlying, uh, underlying uh, set of spikes. I think the orange adds a whole lot. Um, this is, I, I like this more than I should, I'm sure. But uh, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about it because it's not any use to me as a modular thing. Oh, here's an Arcadia ship. Oh man, the Arcadia, what a classic. Um, the Arcadia doesn't really look like this. This is obviously a voxel version of it, but it's not bad. Uh, so if we want to talk about readability, this is obviously a voxel version of a famous ship. And um, even as a voxelized version, you can clearly see how well this reads. It's got this wonderful flow where you've got specific ship segments with their own color schemes and they fold in and out and it's just leaving the perfect impression. Uh, it's a little hard to see given the muddy background elements. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that they chose the same color for the rocks and the hull, but uh, you can still see the impression it gives. I'm not going to talk too much more about this particular ship just because it's a voxel version of another ship and I'd like to look at the raw ship rather than the voxel version, but you know, Here's the Condor, which was actually up at the top of the page, but I didn't look at it up there. Boom. Another one of these organic ships that's becoming more popular. This one is less beetly, but it's still very insectoid. So when you come to organic ships, you're going to have uh, uh, a couple of problems, and they're all based around readability. You can see how busy this ship looks. And that's kind of the point. This is the front, apparently. The point is that it should look like a, a living thing, but this is way too crowded and undifferentiated. Um, I do like how it looks from below. This is a very nice appearance. It feels like it's uh, an aquatic creature that has those phosphorescent lights that help it attract uh, fish and uh, communicate with mates. But the actual um, appearance of the top is just too cluttered to read. This could have been made substantially easier if they had changed the surface coloring to guide the eye a little bit better. And that's a little bit difficult because you can make it feel too artificial if you do that. But that doesn't have to be, you know, something really, really artificial. It can be something like this area is, is more red and this area is more white or something like that anything to help the eye flow across your ship. Uh, that'll help it have the aesthetic impression that you'd like it to have. Otherwise, you're kind of leaving a Borgy impression, and the Borg already do that. It's amazing how, how much better it looks in the thumbnail, because the way the light hits it actually does exactly what I recommended. <laughs> the Arbiter spaceship. The Arbiter, this sounds an awful lot like a fan ship. I think I remember hearing about an Arbiter-class ship in uh, Halo. I don't know if this is it or not. But this is a really well-designed ship. Um, it flows marvelously. I love this. So there's always going to be this fight between different sort of aesthetics. What kind of aesthetics do you like? And normally what happens is whatever ships you loved as a kid are the ones you love as an adult. So you go through life and you're like, I really would like to see more of that thing that really inspired me as a kid. And you end up doing ships that are that but more. And we're definitely seeing that here a little bit. It's a little bit cluttered, but it's not bad. It's certainly far less cluttered than any of the others uh, of this sort that we've seen. Uh, the standout elements are obviously the hospital colored uh, four element, and then the back element is the same, but there's this giant rotating ring in the middle. I don't know what, what in-world explanation this ring would have, but it strikes a wonderful 
balance here and it gives the ship a very st strong aesthetic imprint you're like bam that's the hospital ship with a ring across it i'm going to remember that pretty much forever and then of course it's got these wonderful side rings which are uh, presumably engine related but they are also a great way to help the ship with readability large elements that stand out from the flow of the ship that help to guide your eye and the result is that I really do like this ship. I love how they've subtly gone in with this this kind of hospital color scheme where you've got the really antiseptic colors of the of the hull. But then if you look inside, the cutaway shows that there's stuff underneath. And that is, uh, I think, very well done. The idea of the hull interlocking with uh, other elements is on full display here. And those other elements really react perfectly with the antiseptic whites. Um, this is just a fantastic design. I wish I could do this more easily with modular uh, ships, but it's a little bit difficult to get this kind of really nice flow with a modular ship. Anyway, you can see, once again, the ship's basic shape is very basic. It's just a very slight bent um, rod. This is something you're going to find a lot of. A lot of clean ships end up looking like bent logs. They're, they're not really... their shape isn't really very interesting. And to get around that, you have to be a masterful... you have to use your, um, your elements masterfully. You have to disrupt the flow with some kind of major element like this and this, and you've got to augment the flow with highlights like these. Um, and it's actually quite a bit harder to do that than you might think. Of all of the ships I've seen so far, I think that one is my favorite. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Is this the annoying ship? Yeah, we're going to skip this one because it's got like music and particle effects and stuff. Spaceship from Starlink. Battle for Atlas. This sounds like it's some kind of official ship. A fan, a fan take on an official ship, my guess is. Um, I love that trail. That's really nice. It has something to do with the ship, though. Uh, it does show that it's maneuverable. So this is another space fighter. Uh, I've never been a big fan of space fighters, really, but uh, I definitely do know, you know, I can I can appreciate them. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting than your average space fighter. It's got the same wedge shape with pylons that all of these space fighters have. This one's got some unusual uh, aerospace elements to it. Uh, it's very rare to actually see, um, what are these called? Spoilers. It's very rare to see spoilers on a spaceship. Uh, it's also got intakes, so presumably this is in fact... That might just be reverse thrusters. This is in fact an aerospace fighter. The guns are a little bit weird. They appear to be mounted on pivoting wing elements. You can see how it looks like these are going to fold down or however need to be folded. That's an interesting idea, especially given that they're not... They're not um, hemispherical. They're not circular. They're off-center, which means that even if you were to flip them, the impression they give would be quite different. Uh, they wouldn't be the same shape at all, which is an interesting idea. Uh, I don't really know how it would work. Uh, there's no no animation here, so I can't really play uh, play it out and see how it would look if you folded those down or folded those out. It's an interesting idea. It does leave an interesting aesthetic impression. Uh, it's very, very red. I would say that it could use a little bit more work in making it uh, instantly feel like it's leaving a specific impression rather than just leaving the red thing with guns impression, but certainly not bad. I should open these up in their own windows from now on because, oh, it's been deleted. That's no good. Uh, star conflict. Let's go ahead and keep opening them up here interesting okay so this has some really fun elements to it uh, it's got a distinct aesthetic impression but the impression is at war with itself and it's really rare for that to be what happens we've got this very very clean sharp high-tech nose area central central um, uh, shaft and it's like uh, the sort of super clean lines and colors that you would see in like Mass Effect 
But then we've got these grungy, gray, unplated elements off to the side. I think that this might be in production. I don't think that this is finished because these are untextured. And that's probably not how they're supposed to look. So just going by the uh, the color scheme, rather or rather the shapes, rather than the color scheme, we can see that what this is, is it's got a ton of very, very heavy engines attached to it in a fun formation. And these engines have a really, really unique spiky circular arrangement to them, which is really powerful. I, I like how they feel. Now, it doesn't make any sense. Unless this ship is supposed to be in air, why is it? Why has it got intake turbines? Um, are we flying this through the atmosphere with no kinds of ailerons or wings or anything? But uh, the idea of it having this kind of circular outrigger, pontoon sort of setup, is really interesting. It's almost an inversion of the Star Trek idea of an engine pod or an nacelle, where instead of having a long, solid nacelle, they just kind of have a plug. Uh, that sticks out straight away from the ship. And it gives it a very uh, interesting sort of wide angular appearance. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think it'll look better when the textures are done. Unless that's how it's supposed to look, in which case I don't like it. <laughs> Alright, where were we? Ah, I think we were here. The spaceship owl. Another space fighter. So this one at least has some really interesting uh, aesthetic goals in mind. The actual shape is fairly normal. It's the other kind of space fighter. It's got the central shaft, but instead of just having nacelles in the back, it's got these huge spiky wings up front. This is a very common thing to see as well. I don't remember who made it popular, but it's been around since before there were um, video games. So... <laughs> Uh, the the really standout element for me on this is the color scheme of green and orange. These uh, green patterns here are really, really uh, striking, and they really make the feel of this ship. The orange offsets it perfectly, and there's plenty of gray to go around to balance those colors off. So it feels like it's still quite reserved, even though it's a vivid orange and green color scheme. Um, I don't know what sort of in-world excuse they would have for those. I don't know what those what those would be. Magic space shields or something. But they feel good in terms of how the spaceship looks. Now once again we've got a situation where they are using blatant aerospace parts. This is literally just a plane that they've stuck in here. Uh, but they um, they made it work by embracing it with technology. Uh, I don't really know if I would go for that. Um, it's not like it serves any purpose. Even if they're in the atmosphere, that's not going to be a substantial part of this. Well, either way, uh, the overall ship here leaves a much better impression than most of the ships I've seen. It feels like it was thought out and had a goal, and the colors were chosen carefully, and the game sweeps, or the, the eye sweeps across it properly. Unfortunately, space fighters are no good for me because uh, I am doing modular stuff and space fighters really aren't about assembling things out of square modules. So we're going to skip a couple of space fighters. This is a this might be a space fighter. It looks like it, it is. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's definitely a space fighter, but it's a really interesting one with uh, an obvious aesthetic in mind. So when I talk about leaving an aesthetic impression, this is a good example of how to do that. Um, this is obviously inspired by some kind of moth or butterfly, and it's got these wonderful wings, which really are extremely striking. Um, and the overall impression of the ship is radically altered by these wings. It doesn't feel like it's just a straight-on ship anymore because it's got these wings which have a radically different profile. Also, the ship is actually off-center, which I presume isn't a mistake, uh, which gives it another interesting element to it. I think that this is a real solid example of how to make a ship that leaves an impression, but it's also not a great example of how to make a ship that actually looks good. <laughs> So it leaves a perfect impression. If you show it on screen for a couple of seconds, that I think would work great. 
But if you leave it on screen for too much longer than that, it's going to be hard to justify. I think that a little bit of careful paint or greebling or something could resolve it. Um, making it read with a different profile here, such as this area being, uh, I don't know, dark blue with a streak down the middle or something, or even stripes, anything to make it feel a little bit more visually interesting. The back of the ship shows a little bit of work in that regard. They've got this broken open carapace shape with these dark engine elements jutting out in a very organic manner that's very inspired by Beatles, and it looks great, but this front, it doesn't play. So, um, really striking in, in the first second, and after that it starts to decay. Fighter, 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 fighter. Uh, this isn't a fighter. If it is, it's a big-ass fighter. Oh, it's an animation. Uh, pause. You're being annoying. Pause. I said pause. Wow, that was weird. All right, so this is... It looks like a frigate. It's really hard to see. Can I change the background color here? Because this is really awful. Um, ah, oh jeez. Let's put a dark gray ship against a dark gray background. That'll make us be able to see it. Anyway, I can't friggin' see the ship, so I can't tell you how good it is. Uh, the overall impression it gives is very similar to the one we saw before, where it's got this outrigger circular element. This one is much more uh, spacey rather than aerospacey. It's got a reverse thruster right here in the middle and some attitude adjusters, or maybe they're magnetic containment units. And then it's got a nice big bloom on the back. The overall shape of this ship seems to be pretty decent, but it doesn't leave much of an impression on the eye because I can't frigging see it. Um, so I guess we'll move on. I think it looks like it has the same sort of central, clean central shaft that we saw, but it's surrounded by clutter, which is an interesting approach to just stick clutter onto that sort of shaft. Normally you don't mix super smooth and super rugged like that, but that seems to be what they were aiming for. Well, I can't see it well enough to tell you if it's any good. Let's take a look at the Tharga. Now these are all seem to be from Star Conflict, um, which is apparently releasing their ships for free. Interesting. Uh, so this is definitely a more um, visible ship. And it looks like these folks have very specific goals in mind, and that's good. I like how they have an aesthetic in mind. I'm not sure that they pull it off uh, as well as they could, but at least it's there. This ship is clearly the front half of some sort of tech-based, I don't, I don't know, Terran-ish sort of um, navy, and the back half is obviously some kind of space elf tree navy. Uh, and I think that it would have been a little bit more interesting if the halves were not so clearly divided. It's a little bit too blunt um, the way it is here. It just, the eye doesn't flow very well from one end to the other without some sort of help. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, well, it's interesting because it actually has lots of fun elements like organic offsets rather than perfect um, mirroring. This is uh, not a bad design, it's just that it doesn't read as well as it could. Now, this bridge here, I love it because it's so ridiculous. It's this massive bubble bridge with gold gilding. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that that is a wonderful way to build a bridge. I don't really know, I can't really tell very much about it um, from you know the outside elements here, but I think that that's very well done. And uh, I, I think that's worth study on its own. A plus on the bridge. And now these mechanical elements to push out and rotate this uh, wing area. These would make more sense if the wing area felt like it existed. Is, so is this what's happening? Is this thing deploying the green plants? So if this green plant thing is deployed then that actually makes some sense. Like it's a it's a, a secret ship where it looks like it's just some random rich guy's gold gilt yacht, 
but then these buoys deploy and suddenly there is a massive tree thing with guns attached to it. That might be kind of cool. It's a little bit hard to see from a still shot and the animation certainly doesn't give any impression that that's what's happening. Uh, I do love that bridge though. That's a really nice bridge. Uh, da, 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 space fighters. Here's another one. It's a destroyer according to the ship. There we go. I can see it. Oh my gosh. All right. So I am really already enjoying this thing's color scheme. It's really rare to get this sort of soft, dark gray and bronze. It's a wonderful color scheme. But this ship suffers from uh, the thing, thing I was talking about at the very beginning, the log problem. It just looks like a log. And that's something you're going to have a lot of hard times with unless you are a master of breaking your log up. Now, when I talked about that hospital ship from much earlier, they had a whole bunch of large elements that broke up the profile of the ship. Now, this makes a go at it, but the elements don't break up the profile. They simply make it look like it's got protrusions, and that's not the same thing. And a big part of that is how the eye flows across your protrusions. So with the other ship, we would glide across the nose, then we'd hit the vertical beam, and then we would swirl around on those, um, those rear engine elements. And here we don't have that same flow. It's just ka-bumpa, bumpa, 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 bumpa. And I think that that's a little bit of a shame. Uh, this ship definitely could be salvaged pretty easily. The, the basic idea is wonderful. A lot of the parts are great. I love this command bridge here. Uh, it's very well integrated into the rest of the ship, and uh, it looks like it might even be detachable. That would be kind of fun. Uh, the turret on the side and this outrigger element with a different plating, uh, those are very good. I think that they could be uh, used much more aggressively to create a nice pattern for the eye to follow. If I was going to build this ship, what I might do instead of this pattern here, I might make this the rear, pa the rear element replace this with this, I would make this something that catches the eye rather than being black. It could be it could be bronze or a glow in the dark or anything. And then I would have several of these, but each of them would have some kind of defining element rather than black, like a bronze or glowing ring around them. Because that way you'll you'll go across the log shaped ship and what you'll see is beat 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 bang. And that would feel much more natural and flow much more um, smoothly uh, than this sort of setup where it's just like bumping on a log. But every piece of this is wonderful. It's just that the overall shape of it is not good. And this is, again, from Star Conflict, the same thing I've been talking about for a while now. We get, we get into just endless Star Conflict game uh, ships, and it looks like they all have the same basic issue. Every single piece is marvelous on its own, but they're not put together in a way that flows. Oh, here's a fun one from, again, the same game. So you want to make a bet as to whether or not we have the exact same um, description of it? Okay, so this one is definitely a fighter. I thought it was bigger than this. Uh, it's called an Interceptor. Probably should have tipped me off. Wow, this one reminds me of some seriously 80s movies about spaceships. Uh, so... This one is intended to, it has a specific aesthetic it's going for, and this is something I, I am really enjoying about these Star Conflict ships. They leave a very specific impression, an aesthetic impression on the eye, and it's different for every ship. In this case, they're going for a smooth, fast, organic curve, um, and that's basically the impression they want to leave, and it's basically the impression they do leave. There are some elements of this that it doesn't really have enough of a sense of presence to give us any sort of long-lasting feel. Uh, I won't remember this ship tomorrow because it doesn't have the right sort of impact. It gives that aesthetic it gives that aesthetic impact when you first glance at it, but there's nothing that sticks. And there are a couple of ways you could try and make it more interesting. Uh, just as before, we could add in large glowing elements to, to break the shape up. I think that these guns are a missed opportunity. They look terrible. It would have been much more interesting to have like cutouts here and then put these wingtip gator claws, which are green in one of the other ships. 
put them where this is and just have this whole wing area dominated by those vertical elements, that might make a little bit more visual sense. There's a lot of things you can do, uh, but the, the key here is how do you do those things without disrupting the impression that you want to give, the impression of speed. And that's hard to say. It really does depend on whether or not they're going to get a chance to animate this ship. Because if they put these alligator clips here, they could have them as closed. And when you see it, you just get a sense of a three-pronged, super-fast ship. And then they open up in combat, and they give it a much bigger, more dominant um, uh, impression. And I think that would have probably worked pretty well. Okay, so is this also a fighter? This looks too busy to be a fighter. If this is a fighter, they've really... That's from the same people. I need to move on to other folks because I just have the same thing to say again. No, this is a, this is definitely larger than a fighter. Um, once again, the shapes... So, I don't really like this design, but I can't tell you that it's a bad one because every piece of it is okay. It's just the overall impression it gives is an undifferentiated blob of nothing. And a big part of that is that the eye doesn't flow across it very well. These outlying wing elements are fun, but unfortunately they're placed dead center on the ship, which means that the eye can't friggin' flow. They either need to be near the front or the back or above or below. You put it dead center and the eye is just gonna get stuck dead center on the ship, which is the worst place for it to get stuck. Is this a whole bunch of sketches? What's this? Let's take a look. Finally, not the same dev. Yeah, apparently this is just one thing over and over. Um, so this is more of a sketch than a finished ship. So in that regard, we can talk about the shapes of this ship rather than the textures, which is a fun opportunity. So this ship is made out of some very, very basic shapes connected with pipes, and that's not a bad way to do it. Um, however, I don't believe that it flows very well, but it's hard to say given that it's just a sketch. Uh, with a little bit of paint, you could probably make this thing uh, feel really nice. But what sort of impression do you want to give? Got to figure that out before you make the ship. Another fighter from the same folks. Let's skip over the rest of these um, star people. We'll move on to other folks here. Oh, here's a classic. So these sorts of super long ships are always fun to see. Um, this was how ships were thought about in uh, in the early days of sci-fi, back with like 2001 and stuff like that. You get these incredibly long shafts because the engines were radioactive. You're running the ship off, off of you know um, radioactive pulses, and it's uh, it's something that will um, kill you. <laughs> So you've got these massive, massive shielding elements. It looks like they took the idea, but they didn't really understand what was going on with it. Can I change the sun so I can see what's back here? No? Okay. Interesting choice. Um, because this isn't really... None of these are shield elements. And this looks like it's a HAB module, so this can't be... Well, maybe he does know what he's... Maybe he has a specific idea in mind. Uh, I'm, I would bet this is the engine, and that's some kind of either um, plow to push particles aside or a uh, bussard um, a magnetic gatherer to pull the particles in. Uh, either way, it's not a bad design. This this engine looks really weird. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the, the setup. Uh, it's a little bit fun to see this sort of design because it uh, has, has been so long since we've actually seen these. Uh, nobody uses these kinds of ships anymore. Yeah, this is cute. And this is the sort of ship you can make out of modules, so this is a sort of aesthetic I could go for, but I probably won't. Uh, more of that same... Group. Here's another one of those beetle ships. Uh, more of the same. They have a lot of ships here. This is a fighter again. I think it is, yeah. Mm ah, here.
This is from Fractured Space, which is probably a different game. Oh, once again, the dark with the uh, with the bronze highlights. This is I love this color scheme. Um, I wonder if this is the same person or the same team that did the other one that I was talking about. No, because I think that was actually the people I was getting tired of. So this is definitely a show of how you could do the same sort of setup that we had before, but in a way that reads. So here you can see that it's not just a straight log. Uh, it's got a lot of verticality to it, and it's got a ton of really, really highly decorative elements on the side that break it up and give you that nice flow. In addition to this wonderful uh, docking port, cloaking engine, cloacking engine, um, in addition to this cloacking engine, it's got this wonderful bronze piping that's highly, highly visible. It's not like subtle at all to really slam your eye down through this chamber uh, and lead you to the back. And then the back has this wonderful plating, which is basically the opposite sort of feel. And it gives you a, it just feeds your eye. You've got this wonderful, and that's great. I love the lines of this ship. Uh, I could make a lot of nitpicks about this front end, but I mean, whatever, it's fine. It's not too bad. Uh, overall, I think that this ship is really great. I love the boldness for which they've gone for this orange piping. They're like, what kind of colors do we want for our ship? Well, I want it to be dark and sinister, but I also want people to be able to see it. So we're going to go for dark and sinister with bright orange warning stripes. <laughs> uh, and I think it works great. It gives it a very sort of oil rig feel, and it reads wonderfully. This is, this is my second favorite ship of the day. And this is also something I could do with modules, so that's nice. No, oh, that's that's just a fan ship. Bum, bum, ba, dum, bum. Fighter Atlas. That's from the same ship. Fan art. Fighter. Same people. Um, got a lot of these one people. So apparently Fractured Space has a whole line of these dark gray ships with orange piping. Yeah, I love the people who are doing Fractured Space. They're very, very good at creating ships that read well. Um, their overall design language seems a little bit finicky, uh, but it's not bad. It's uh, It's got a lot of potential. Um, these, folks are, are they, these folks seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, I, I like how readable their ships are. The shapes they actually use are kind of iffy. Um, this is very flat and carrier-y, which doesn't really make any sense. These square underslung bins are incredibly ugly, and they don't really work with the flow of the ship. Uh, but the overall ideas here are good. It's just that the actual flow didn't work out for this ship. Um, I think it would be a little bit better if there was a specific thing in mind that they wanted you to feel when you looked at this. Because when I look at this right now, I think giant spike with yellow cargo areas. Um, and that's really not a very coherent thought. Uh, it might have been a little bit more interesting if the cargo area, if this was intended to be a cargo ship, then you want to have cargo areas scattered throughout and they could have made them work a little bit better as a repeated pattern uh, rather than just a two off. They labeled the logo here. I think this is supposed to be a military ship, probably a carrier, uh, but it it feels like they took the lines of a naval carrier and just kind of half-assed a uh, a result. And that that isn't that isn't they are better than that. And I know they're better than that, just having seen a couple of their other ships. So this is a th apparently a battle cruiser. It looks really <laughs> very gunnish. So one of the m more common doctrines in starship design is the gun doctrine, where your ship is supposed to look like a gun. And you can sort of see how this ship's shape is gun-shaped. So this is very much like that. However, rather than going for a pure gun-shaped blob like so many of the other 
uh, manga, for example, or anime does, uh, they've gone for a for a for one with a much more refined and streamlined set of elements. It's not just a um, a rectangle stretched back. It's got lines to it, and that's actually really nice. I, the the flow excuse me the flow of this ship is good. The painting is super basic, um, and the greebling is uninspired. Yeah, I think that these folks didn't give enough thought to the impression they wanted to leave, and so they just kind of put together, we need a battle cruiser. Let's use our standard design language, but not, you know, our standard shape language, but not actually give it too much thought. Um, it flows okay just because of the shape of the ship, but you're not going to remember it tomorrow. It doesn't leave an aesthetic impression at first glance, not to me at any rate. Uh, where were we here? Uh, here's a sorry ship. See? Sorry. Har har. Oh, I like this. The first impression it gives is strong, and it also looks good as I continue to look good, look at it. This is well done. There's no reason to apologize. So... There's some things I don't like about this ship, but they're all things that I don't like about um, design languages that aren't mine, shape languages that aren't mine. I don't like underslung missiles in space, um, and I don't like these kinds of airstream controllers. But at least this ship gives the impression that it might actually be useful in the atmosphere, as opposed to most of the ships that have this stuff, which are thoroughly not useful in the atmosphere because they are full of holes. Uh, this ship actually has at least some vague attempt at being aerodynamic. So the only part of the ship I don't like is right here. This area here is bad, but the rest of this ship flows really well and it looks really good. Um, so there's a couple of details that I'd like to draw your attention to. One is that this cockpit glass isn't just a giant cockpit glass element. It's got this opaque elements on top here. I really like that. It gives it an interesting feel, the semi-transparent um, solid plating on top here. But keep in mind that that's underneath the standard hole level, so that's probably inside the glass. Uh, it really makes it feel much more um, airlinery, because this is the sort of thing you might see in, uh, in an airliner. Now this is obviously very inspired probably by Space Citizen or whatever it's called. Um, it feels, it feels, this feels like it's a little bit familiar, but it's such a good design. This is a really wonderful bridge. The, uh, the back area here with the working elements, it flows well, and more importantly, it actually guides the eye so perfectly. Can you feel that sweep from the, uh, from the cockpit back into the working area? Uh, if I have any bones to pick, it's that this, ridge here doesn't really end with the sharpness it should. Um, this border between the nose area and the rest of the ship softens it too much, and uh, that's a little bit of a shame. I can see why they did that, but in the end it kind of just kind of goes, and that's not a good feel for it. Um, there are other things they could have done to make that work a little bit better, so the eye doesn't flow quite as well at that angle. This This hatched mechanical section back here. Uh, I don't really know if this is part of their design language, if this is part of their shape language, if their other ships have this same sort of weird hatching, weird mechanical elements. Uh, I don't know what it would be for, but if it's part of their language, it works great. Uh, it's Although I can't parse it, it works lovely as a way to move into the engine area. So if there is an in-universe shape language involving this, then it's wonderfully done. And if not, it's a little bit too forced. The engines work really well. Um, they have a, a wonderful combination of rugged elements and nice smooth decoration, which make it flow straight into the rest of the ship design. Uh, wonderfully done. And this here in the back, you can hear echoes of this element back here. It's a, the, the shape language is really refined, um, perhaps by accident, but uh, it's really quite nice. I like it. The underside is kind of crap. Um, 
I don't really know what's going on down here, and I can't really figure it out because I don't know anything about the universe. It doesn't feel right, but maybe the idea is that this is actually just like a drop pod or something, and it's not supposed to feel like it's part of the ship. It's supposed to just be something they're carrying. If that's the case, I would have liked to see a little bit better embracement. Uh, for example, some sli some side bars or something that could go from shoof and then around the sides. Anything to make it feel a little bit less flumpy. Still, this is lovely. Um, my complaints are minor. Well, what a wonderful ship. I love how you can explore this uh, this whole setup and be like, oh, well, let's talk about random ships I found, some of which are world class. <laughs> what are we looking at here? Oh, let's take a look. I'm starting to get a little bit tired of doing this. Oh, wow, it's been an hour? Jesus. All right, well, maybe we'll stop pretty soon here. So this is fun. It's definitely beetle inspired, but instead of the bulbous shape that we normally get, they've gone for a gun shape. So it's a gun shape, but it's still very beetly. It's got the beetle legs, it's got the beetle protrusions and the beetle wings. Uh, it's obviously a VTOL of some variety, although I'm not sure how that would work, given that the engines are so off center. But overall, I think it's a fun little design. It's it's half construction vehicle, gun-shaped construction vehicle, and half beetle. Um, and I think that that is a fun impression to leave. Here's one that is all about leaving an impression. This is the sort of spaceship I really admire. Uh, it's, it's one where they went, I want to leave a specific impression. And in this case, I want to leave the impression of a tropical fish. But it's not a tropical fish. It's a magic spaceship that just happens to give the impression of a tropical fish. Uh, it's really entirely oriented around this ring, obviously, and I think that that is a wonderful, simplistic little choice. That is great. It's a little too basic for me to make it my favorite or anything, but it is well done. Oh, well, here's a huge ship, but it's from the Star Guys, so we'll skip it for now. Uh, this ship leaves a good impression, but it's a starfighter, so I'm going to skip it. I'm beginning to think a lot of my starfighters leaving good impressions is just that they're colored. <laughs> um, the black and white starships, the gray starships never really feel up to snuff for me. All right, so here is the Harbinger. This is a classic design. Uh, in fact, it's so classic that I wonder whether or not this is a fan design. Um, I don't know what it would be a fan design of, but it's this is the kind of battleship that is super popular in video games right now. It's a gun-shaped battleship with nacelles. This is the standard. It's even got the standard bridge area. Um, the overall lines of this ship are pretty solid. I love this little sloped um, element that leads out to the nacelles. This underslung element is a little bit overdone, uh, given the actual placement of the engines. It's uh, something where, you know, it looks good on a gun, but it doesn't look so good on a spaceship unless you're balanced out properly, and we are definitely not. <laughs> well, either way we cut it, uh, this is obviously deeply inspired by modern uh, war um, spaceships, you know, the fiction of modern spaceships uh, is very strongly um, is, is this this is this is what modern spaceships look like if you boil them down I do like some of these elements the wing element here with the uh, uh, the flat plating and then the dense greebling that's really nice I love these flat elements and then this streaked start part that's really nice um, and this part here which looks like it was part of another model kit that got slapped on I like that it gives a very kit bash feel and it feels pretty good it's just not my style of ship. It's too blunt. It doesn't leave any impression on me at first glance, aside from, oh, look, a warship. Um, I really like my ships to feel like they mean something you know, much more distinct right from the start, and uh, that ship doesn't. It's fairly indistinct. Here's a spaceship test, which is a space fighter, so we're going to skip it, but you can see how that's a pretty nice test. It's got a really iconic look to it. That's good. 
Nice test. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, just maybe a couple more and then we'll call it quits. Here's Commander Spaceship G7 by CG Pitbull. He is the fellow that made the very first ship we looked at, which I said had a good color scheme but and a good shape system, but it was over -greebled. And guess what? I have the exact same things to say about this. It's got a good color scheme. Oh, well, actually, the color scheme isn't even that good. It's got a good shape. Well, even the shape's not that great. It's got an iconic shape, at any rate. But it's so densely over -greebled that it doesn't leave very much of an impression. Uh, the idea of splashing color onto part of the ship to make it read is an interesting one, but I would prefer it if you backed that up by making the ship read properly. Uh, a lot of easy ways you could have done that. You could have made these less greebled or ungreebled. Could have made these less greebled or ungreebled. A good idea for that would be if these planes were quite flat and then just had like a, an orange side element or something similar. Um, they also kind of just fart their way through that ring. It doesn't feel natural at all. So that um, that could definitely be polished up. The overall idea of having something go through this ring and then come out the other side isn't a bad one. It's a pretty iconic sort of shape to give your ship. It would uh, feel distinct and unique. It's just that it doesn't it doesn't really work in this case. It's a little bit too slapped together. It doesn't it doesn't, the eye doesn't flow across it properly. Not my eye, anyway. Toon Spaceships, Dormitory Room. This spaceship seems quite small. <laughs> Here's one. This leaves a super good impression. Uh, actually, all of these ships leave pretty good impressions. This is a good place for us to leave off, these four ships. So this ship here is um, has many of the same problems that we talked about back at the beginning, where it's obviously being inspired by something, and they just went, I want that thing, but more, and they stapled more stuff on it. Even looking at this small version, it's clearly over greebled and doesn't sweep with the authority it should in terms of how the eye should flow across it. Um, the, the VTOL engines could really resolve that problem with a redesign. I think that it, this ship could be made quite iconic if the VTOL engines were a little bit more powerfully designed and incorporated into the overall flow of the ship. These rear engines with their um, side glowy elements could really work perfectly, but only if that VTOL engine actually led to them rather than pulling us aside from them. I love this little yellow space fighter. Uh, I think I just have a soft spot for brightly colored space fighters. Uh, this is a Star Wars ship, I th I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I don't like these as Star Wars ships, but they're fun to look at on their own. Um, they have a very strong impression, and that impression is that Darth Vader is going to mine your head for rebellion secrets. Uh, and I think that that's fine. It's a, it works very well in terms of the shape language. It's just that that's not Star Wars' shape language. So, <laughs> And this stinger, which is where we'll stop for the day. Another ship by Sari. I like this guy or girl. I like, the, I like this person. They are really good at spaceships. So this, I like it. Uh, this is obviously aerospace, given that there's not even a hood over these people. They're just kind of out and uh, in the in the public eye here, and their bodies are missing. Do -do um, as some kind of airspeed skimmer, this works really well. Uh, I like these grates on the bottom that sort of give you a uh, a sense that that's an operational area. That's not just plating for plating's sake. I love these bent cables, these bent pipes that lead out to what are presumably intakes and weapons. That's really wonderful. That is such a wonderful shape. Um, you could make an entire universe out of that shape language right there. Uh, grates and bent pipes. That would work. You could just... Nothing else. Just that. And you could tie together hundreds of ships made with a whole bunch of different ideas and designs. As long as you keep using those particular shape elements, they would tie them all together very well. Uh, the engine element here is fun. It's uh, it's obviously its own thing, and it's deeply inspired by uh, by boat engines, and it looks fun. Uh, I think that it's integrated quite well with the chassis in terms of how it feels. This whole thing obviously intended to feel like a speeder or you know a small boat, 
including these elements, which don't make any sense in terms of this spaceship, but in a real boat, that would be the under deck, the, uh, the lower deck, um, which many speedboats have, like a very, very small lower deck. Uh, the overall impression it gives of being a speedboat is very well done. I think that this is a great ship, and it's a good place to stop. Let me know below if you uh, agree with me or disagree with me on any of these ship ideas. I know that I obviously have a very specific design aesthetic, especially since I'm searching for things that might be useful to me uh, as a shape language on my own. And I can see that, Sto that Sorry has plenty of uh, ships that I won't, that I don't like. Um, it seems like he's kind of hit or miss. Uh, a lot of his ships are just copies. A lot of his ships are just fan art. But the ones I saw of him were very well done. Maybe those are actually his own designs. Maybe not. Let me know. And uh, I will see you all around.